Hello, you lovely lot. Welcome back to Monday's episode here at Barham Engines. If you haven't already, guys, go over to our second channel, Life Outside Barham. Hit the like and subscribe button if you would. Um, I know you hate me plugging my channels um, and also this one if you haven't already guys just hit that subscribe button it really does help us quite a lot right guys just to nip one thing in the bud I know it's first thing Monday morning all a bit sudden this um, but going by some of the comments people were saying Isaac is so much better at videoing than you when you do it I get seasick there's a reason for it and that is because my little contraption here is not like his gimbal um, but it's very difficult to video with yourself with the gimbal because I have to keep turning it around um, and it doesn't seem to like it. So while he's videoing me, all a bit stationary, it's very smooth. Um, and that's why I get him, to do, get, it, get him to do it as much as I want. But when I'm vlogging myself, I have to use this, unfortunately. So to all you people there that are getting seasick, I'm really, really sorry. Um, but if you just take your sickness tablets now, Everything should be all right. Anyway, let's crack on. Right, guys. So first things first, John's just took a trip to Tom Upton's and brought a few things back, one of which is this cover. Now, this is the rocker cover that is going on that Cosworth there. And you can see we've had to weld everything up. So we've got a breather pipe that went in there. Tom's welded that up. We've got a sensor that went in here. Obviously, it was a cam pickup sensor off the inlet at some point with the two bolt holes. Welded all that up. And we obviously don't need the oil filler cap because he's going to be filling up from his oil tank, which will be in the boot, apparently, because we've got dry sump on this. So what I'm going to be doing is tidying all this up, giving it a good blast, um, paint it. He's going to go, he wants to go sort of graphite grey, a dark graphite grey on this, he said, which does match the inside of the engine. Then we're going to do our usual machine over the top. So I'm sure that's going to look very, very nice when I've finished it, guys. Um, right, secondly, the Merc. It's looking pretty much done, guys. Nearly out of bits here. Just got to get the front pulley and what have you on. It's ridiculous, really. The last sort of stage of a motor like this, where you've got loads of bits, especially a motor which I haven't took apart, which is a nightmare. Um, what is the time now? We're looking 25 past one, and I'm still on the thing. I've been on it all day, although I have had a couple of distractions, one of which was well worthwhile, I'll tell you in a minute. Um, but yeah, just little bits that I've had to clean up, like little brackets. This is about all I've got left here, these few bits. Um, and obviously the pulley and the distributor, but we'll stick those on in a minute. And then we're all done. But yeah, it's surprising really. You can easily chuck a, another eight hours at just sticking little brackets on that you don't even know where they go. Fortunately, Paul sent me four or five photos that he did have of the engine when it come in. Um, he took a few bits off, but the engine was absolutely caked. I'll put a picture on here of what the engine did look like when it come in. So when you compare it to that, it looks so much better. Um, and hopefully it's going to look really nice under the bonnet. It's an SL280, um, nine, about 1980, something like that. Lovely, lovely car. So yeah, but it's just surprising how much the hours add up on these things, really. People don't seem to realize how long they take. But anyway, I'm nearly there with, got, with that, guys. Um, which brings me on to one of my disturbances today. Um, Andy come in, the chap that owns this M3 engine and the other two M3 engines inside. Now, the deal is with Andy is he wants a motor built up. He's got all the stuff at home to build this into a complete motor. So what he wants is a tall engine, all done, but he wants trick bits in it. So we want rods, pistons, cams, etc. cetera. Um, in exchange for all the bits upstairs that will make complete engines like Vanos units, all the bits, um, alternators, etc., cetera. Um, and I can have the other two motors. So it's one of those where I've got to work out, I said next stage will be, I will work out how much it will cost for me to build one of those motors um, in comparison to what one of these engines fetches either built or not built in complete order. I mean, they do fetch quite a bit of money now. The only thing is that was the engine that he had in his car originally, which has done a big end. Hopefully we can salvage that crank. If not, that means the difference of probably a grand to 1500 quid because they're getting quite sought after now, these cranks out of the B32s. This crank is all good in this one. So that is an engine that's good. And we can obviously 
the best thing for me to do probably with one of the with at least one of these would be to build it up into a complete motor all done probably worth a few quid but it's just one of those in it it's difficult to say how much you're going to get for it what's it worth it's worth whatever someone's willing to pay at the time i suppose um, but they are getting quite sought after so that's the sort of deal i'm going to be doing with andy but the next thing is the main thing i want to get um the crank out of that the head off etc so i'll get that stripped and we can get it all washed then i shall probably put that one up and um, strip that because he wants to use that because that was the engine that was in the car originally apparently he, um, the end went at Nürburgring he heard a bit of a knock he's turned it straight off but looking at the journal it's um, it's not disastrous but it's not brilliant um, you can see it down there look yeah, it's definitely done something the rods knackered obviously but Almost certainly, as we know, guys, being a six um, does it on the fours, but being a six, that's going to have almost certainly bent the crank, that. So, um, so yeah, that's the deal we'll be doing. This week, hopefully, if we get that Merc off the stand, we can, uh, we can continue to see what we've got with them BMWs. It'd be nice to get them out of the way, really. They've been on the floor for quite a while. Um, but what Andy did bring in for me, guys, is this. Yes, that is a wing in red. Um, but not only is it a wing, it's an E30 wing. And it ain't just any normal E30 wing, guys. That is an original steel, really good condition, um, M3 Evolution 2 wing, which has got apparently the bigger arch, the same as on my fiberglass wing. Um, it's got a little bit of a sort of, it's had a repair down the bottom. Well, both of them have had sort of repairs right down the bottom, which obviously the um, the side skirt covers anyway, but generally it's a really, really good condition wing. Now, I know I've got fiberglass wings, but the reason that I would like to run the steel wings, um, if I could, was obviously we've got a steel bonnet. Fiberglass bumpers, absolutely fine, they're great. The only trouble is with the wings, the fiberglass wings, is where you've got all this complicated sort of bending going on here where it sits over the top of the inner wing. It's obviously very thin with the metal, but with the fiberglass, you're looking three or four mil, and we just can't get it to fit very nice. Um, and I'm afraid, I think it's gonna spoil the whole front of the car. So yeah, he's bought those in. Um, I've done a deal with him, absolutely brilliant. Um, but trying to get those Evo wings is non-existent. To have them made is big money. Um, you can have them in carbon fiber, but again, big money. Um, so I would, I would like it if the front was sort of steel, it will make the car look so much better and so much more finished. So yeah, thank you very much, Andy. Had an interesting email at the weekend. Yeah. Off a of viewer, Mike McGuinness. Hello, Mike, if you're watching. Um, I have quite a lot of emails like this where they say, oh, have a look at this or have a look at that. Yeah. Sometimes it's like YouTube videos or that I might be interested in. But this one, I just thought I'd have to put it in the video because I've never seen this before. Now, you don't know anything about this. No. Uh, right. Have you heard of knurling? Yes. What is knurling? It's like putting like a little grip finish on, on like a bit of bar or something like that. Yeah. So you do it sometimes on like a handle yeah. or something like that. You yeah. Want like a bit a textured... of bit of purchase on. Yeah. Well, we've all seen knurling in engineering for things that you probably shouldn't be doing but it's like a quick fix yeah so in the engine reconditioning game i've seen guides that are knurled on the outside really uh yeah so where they where the guide isn't that tight in the head they will knurl oh, the outside right. and it makes it a bit tighter it puffs it up doesn't it when you puffs it, it up a bit <laughs> but this is quite interesting have you ever seen someone knurling the skirt of a piston <laughs> I saw this. Did you? I, I seen this on Facebook or something. <laughs> I mean, I've never even... I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... I've seen some shenanigans going on in engines before. That looks healthy. In fairness, they've done a pretty good job of knurling yeah. that. Yeah, no, they have. Like, how would you hold it? I don't know. Without it ripping it? Because you've got to put a bit of pressure on Big time. Yeah. Quite a lot of pressure. You can't really put any support in the end of the piston. 
to stop it from flapping about. But they've been fairly impressed with that. They've probably <laughs> spent a, as much time doing that in time as it would cost for a new set of pistons, surely to God. Probably. It's not a slow, uh, quick process. No. <laughs> but that is some lash up, I isn't it? I wonder what the balls I'm are like. I'm just jealous that we haven't stripped an engine with them. Yeah. Really. I wonder what the balls are like. They must be ripped right up. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> like a ploughed field. I mean, if they've obviously they've done that to try and take up some slack. They've obviously got piston slack. I mean, nothing to do with the fact that the base of the skirt of the piston is falling off. But <laughs> that's going to last all of about... 20 minutes, I reckon? If that. And it gonna, ain't going to do the bore any good, is it? It's just going to do damage. That is some <laughs> serious skullduggery. Bloody hell. Isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, we've seen a few things in here. Um, not quite to that extent. Although, John, bear in mind, John's been doing this 50 years. <laughs> He's seen, um, he stripped an engine once with a wooden piston in. Wooden <laughs> piston. <laughs> Sure, that worked. Well, apparently it did. Bloody hell. I've seen, um, there's a guy on YouTube, he's a Russian guy, but he does all sorts of um, experiments like that. Really? He, put, he made wooden pistons for one of his engines. Work? Uh, for about 10 minutes, I think. I mean, the... Th he done plastic th ones as well. The trouble is, you, it takes some time to do this, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, you think he, this bloke that I've watched is like stripping down an engine making the pistons and putting it all back together to run it for five minutes until oh, it blows mate. up. <laughs> Just unbelievable. Fair play. Fair play. I've, as I say, these days, I mean, modern type motors wouldn't stick it, but yeah, I've seen some stuff, but that there is pretty impressive, really. Because the trouble crazy. is, these pistons, these modern pistons here are tapered down yeah. from the top down the skirt so they only touch at the bottom of the skirt so they're not a parallel piston so they may as well have only know that very bottom part really well that's what i mean they don't even the realize inch. that do they they've you know it's just ridiculous but there we go amazing <laughs> it is amazing top tip know your pistons <laughs> <laughs> not only do we not Re-ring here. We do not knurl piston skirts <laughs> or re-ring. Oh, Christ. So there we go. Thank you very much, Mike. Right, moving on, mate, to the Rover. Rover. It's about time we got the Rover sorted. So, now we've got all the block clean. Uh, where the liner sits is on that flange there, down in the base of the block. Okay, so what I wanted to do was get it all cleaned thoroughly on the liner and the block yep. so we don't get a false reading. Yeah. Okay. So we've cleaned all that up now. We've marked it front number one. Okay, just so we're the correct way around. And I want a nice positive metallic, he says. Sound really. Like that. Perfect. Lovely. So what I'm going to do now is measure with our depth, depth mic. I'm going to measure the height of this. So a bit tricky. Got to sit it, try and sit it flat on the liner. So you sit it flat on the surface that's higher and then wind down very gently. So we have six thou that side and what you're relying on is there being an, a very oh, and the same the other side so we got six thou protrusion I do which I would say is probably too much yeah I don't know you I, John said I, John said something about six thou on these really that's the number he pulled out of his head for the height but Yeah, so I'm going to have to go and check exactly what the height is. Yeah, yeah. Six thou we've got. So the reason I do it one side and the other is because if you haven't, if it's, if there's a very slight bit of rock in the base, yeah. the liner could be sitting one way or the other. So we do it and we do it 
both sides and then do it as an average. Mate, he's fired his lawnmower up and we can't <laughs> hear a thing. Or a car with no exhaust. It's one of these. It is one. It's literally one of them. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I can't That's believe brilliant. that. <laughs> I didn't even notice that until you said. Funny. Sounds <laughs> fruity. Oh, that. brilliant. Um, so yes, I'm not sure. I've got in my head two or three thou protrusion. Maybe, I don't know. But six thou does seem quite a lot. If you run too much protrusion, you run the risk of the gasket not clamping on the actual yeah. block face. Yeah. So what we're gonna do on here, I'm gonna get a price for new pistons and liners, see what the customer wants to do, whether he wants us to build it up or he wants to put it together. Um, if I measure the liners and they're all perfect and the pistons are perfect, it's entirely up to him whether he puts it together with that or not but um i would preferably put new liners in new pistons yeah we're going to be putting it together um so what i normally do now we know that's six thou um obviously we'll double check it if we get new liners we'll face the block until it cleans you can see there's a bit of a to do there look it's like someone's oh, gone yeah. over it with a file or something so we just face that block until yeah, it cleans one. same there yeah and then we know how much to take off each individual liner and we do it individually. Yeah. So that'd be the next step, mate. I'll have a chat with him once I've measured these up and see, uh, see what he wants to do. Sounds but good. But we're still waiting for another head off him, actually, I think. Yeah, he wants to go non-VVC, didn't he? Yeah. Well, that's it for today's video, I'm afraid, guys. Um, stay tuned for Wednesdays. We've just had another engine coming in here. Very exciting. Um, but until then, a great evening. We'll see you then. Take it easy, guys.